this is the energy master room, by the way, just in case you may have accidentally clicked the wrong one. But we're going to go ahead and kick off in just a couple of minutes. We're going to give people some time to make the transition from the live stream over to here. So give us just a few minutes, and then we'll go ahead and uh, uh, start kicking off with our first questions. By the way, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the Q&A section of the webinar. Um, or you can go ahead and start putting stuff into the chat as well. Um, but again, for those of you who are just joining and just kicking in, I'm seeing the numbers pop up. We're going to give it probably two or three minutes for people to transition over from the live stream over here, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this is the Energy Master Room. Um, I, I'm Brian Collins from Startup Bootcamp, and this is Jaime Salazar from Energy Master. Uh, we'll Thank do a you, full man. introduction. Anytime, man. We'll do a full introduction and breakdown with everybody. Um, once we give people some time, seeing a couple more people come in. So, folks, thank you so much for joining. Um, I want to give it just literally two more minutes. I want to give two more minutes for people who are transitioning over from the live stream over to here. So, sit back, relax. If you maybe needed to get a drink or use the restroom, now's the time before we officially kick off. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started in just two minutes. We'll start with a Q&A session and then we'll open it up to you guys. Uh, if you have questions you want to ask Energy Star, feel free to go ahead and drop them into the Q&A section as well before we, uh, we fully kick off. Really excited for this and thanks for everybody um, for joining. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I think with that, I think we'll go ahead and just go ahead and get started if that's all right. So for those of you who didn't see uh, just from a second ago, but hello, my name is Brian Collins. I'm going to be your host today in the Energy Master Room. But I am actually secondary in all of this because the man with the plan, the person we want to hear from, is right there on the other screen. Jaime Salazar, CEO and co-founder of Energy Master. Jaime, do you have anything you want to say to the crowd? Well, thank you very much for this. Um, I'm really excited, even though it's midnight here in Colombia, but I'm fully <laughs> awake. So I'm feeling great. Not only... Not only is it midnight in Colombia, but there was a giant thunderstorm there earlier, right? We thought we might yeah. lose power. <laughs> I was a little bit afraid an hour ago because it was a <laughs> tremendous thunderstorm. So I was hoping for the electricity not to fail me on this trip. Well, thanks so much for, for joining us through wind or rain. We'll get through this. Um, so folks, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to kick off by asking Jaime some questions to get things going. Dig a little bit deeper. If you have any questions, head up onto the top of your screen or just on the side of your screen, you should see a Q&A section. Uh, you'll be able to start dropping some questions in there at any time. If for whatever reason you can't find that and you still have some questions, go ahead and drop them into the chat as well. We'll go through and drop those and uh, start to ask those questions as we go through. But um, Jaime, why don't we go ahead and kick off right from the beginning here. Let's start off from the top of our list of questions. So while we're waiting for people to put their questions in, what I want to ask you first is what is the biggest opportunity for Energy Master in Australia? What, what's the number one thing you're really excited about? All right. Um, first of all, before I answering your question, I see a lot of people from Latin America and if they want to ask a question in Spanish, they're, they're free to do it. Uh, I will translate it. And so we can, you know, all interact in the same virtual room. All right. And do you want to do, do you want to do that same announcement in Espanol? Because I know we've got some uh, non-native English speakers in the group too. Yes. Uh, para los que deseen hacer las preguntas en español, pueden escribirlas tanto en el chat como en la sección de preguntas y respuestas. Pueden hacerlo en español sin ningún problema. Eh, las leemos y las traduzco lo mejor que pueda para que todos podamos entender. Perfect. All right. So, first question was, what's the biggest opportunity you see in Australia? All right. Um, it's not about the market size. And don't get me wrong, it's three times bigger than in Colombia. Uh, but it's all about the mentally, the, the mentality. Uh, most of the companies in, in Australia have innovation teams looking for, for new solutions, for innovation, for, for new practices. So that's where we're becoming. Uh, we have a huge potential and, and working with those people who are trying to, to do things better 
and in, in, in another way is in, inside the companies. That's where we can prove the value. So that's a great opportunity for us in the Australian market. Awesome. Um, hi, May. Just as a heads up, before I go to my next question, somebody's already dropped something in the chat, so I just want to share it with you. They're sailing. It's fantastic to see another Colombian in the energy changing revolution. So you've got some fans in the chat already, my friend. Um, wow. Next Thank you question so much. for me. And Next question for me, and then I did see the first question come to the Q&A, so I'll ask that next. But what's been the biggest difference so far with you between Australia and Colombia? What's been the biggest difference between those markets or between the business styles? What's kind of been the hardest thing for you to overcome? All right. Uh, besides the language, um, <laughs> I, I think um, tariffs, structures, uh, people and companies in Australia, they use smart mm -hmm. meters, IoT devices, which in Colombia, we're just starting that uh, path and it was amazing for us how can how can a customer or a company can switch from an, en an energy provider to another one it's very easy so in colombia it's quite difficult to switch from one provider to another so those were the three uh things that we uh found out about working in the australian market yeah cool Thanks, Jimmy. All right, our first group question, and for those of you who may have just joined or if you're not familiar with Zoom webinars, uh, you're welcome, anybody's welcome to drop a question into the Q&A. Go ahead and put it there and then I'll read them off to Jimmy so you can see him. But Jimmy, our first question here is, once you identify a baseline that is off, how do you approach resolving the dispute with the energy provider? Do you have an angle on a brokerage or a mediation process? So this question is from Nicholas Solomon. Do you want me to read that again? Oh, uh, no, it's fine. Uh, well, in Colombia, uh, we have one person which is, is specializing claims. She's a lawyer and all, all she does is working with energy providers trying to solve disputes. Uh, right here, the rate of mistakes in their invoices and, 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 and all their system is pretty high. So mm -hmm. what we do is to find anomalies we point down in the direction of those anomalies and we start talking with the energy providers about it. Cool. So it's really about dispute resolution at the end of the day for you guys. Well, that's part of our business. It's a small yeah. part, but yeah, it is important. Okay, cool. Um, you've got another fan in the group. Sarah said it was a great pitch, Jimmy. Just wanted, she wanted to let you know, Sarah Basalis from uh, you, Energy Australia. If anybody else has other questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A section. Otherwise, I'll jump back to the questions I've got for you. So Jimmy, when you talk to your customers, what problems are you most excited to help them solve? What are the, you know, what's the reason that you get excited when you get up every day, when you're working on this really incredible business you guys have built? Yes, uh, and it's not about only talking with potential users or clients, it's about talking to everyone on the street when I tell them about this project, uh, I can hide my enthusiasm because we're solving a simple problem, which is the, the analytics of utility bills. I always start my presentation or my, my pitch asking a question. What do you do with your utility bill? It's, mm -hmm. my, personal, it's my personal problem. When, when the bill gets here, I don't look at it. I just pay, that's it. And that's only one bill, right? Now, like I said before, imagine a multi-site corporation with thousands of invoices. And mm -hmm. another thing uh, that in Colombia, we have one bill for energy, water, public waste, public lighting, it's only one. In Australia, you have an invoice for every service that's more paperwork, right? So we tell our clients, don't worry about all those things. We know for sure that those bills have errors that some kind of anomalies or abnormalities in the services. So we're gonna provide you peace of mind using our software. You go do your thing, main on your, on your core business. Let us do that work for you. So that's very exciting for us. I think peace of mind is super important in this day and age, especially as many companies are trying to find ways to cut costs and trying to find way to lower margins um, as, so that they don't have to be, you know, making reductions or redundancies in their workforce. 
Um, folks, again, if you have any questions, drop them into the Q&A and I'll go ahead and ask them. Um, Jimmy, I, this isn't one of the ones that I gave you earlier, but something that you just kind of sparked in my head. Um, what are the, you know, what are the types of companies? Do you have a particular profile for the types of companies that you like to work with? Yes. Multi-site corporations like banks, supermarkets, mm. restaurant chains, coffee chains, call centers, you know, companies with a lot of branches. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter if it's one country. We, we're talking about multi-site corporation in different countries. We can run the analytics from here in order to help them get sustainability indicators and, and, and try to help them understand what they're paying in utilities. And is that because you can, you feel like you provide the most value to multi-sided companies through all the different value ads that you guys provide? Yes, Brian. Um, we tell them if they're overpaying or if they have problems uh, in any given branch or, or site or building and we let them know at the right time to, to mm -hmm. act quickly and don't, and don't lose money with those problems. Cool. cool. Jimmy, great answer. Uh, we've got another question from the audience, folks. If you have any other questions, drop them in the Q&A and I'll get to them. This one from Oscar. He says, how do you help with the tariff review with tendering or advanced procurement? How do you help with the tariff review with tendering or advanced procurement? All right, uh, that's another part of our business. Um, we validate the, the tariffs or the rates from the energy provider. Sometimes uh, it's, not, it's not the same. So the system can, you know, immediately there is, a, there is a difference in the rate which we set up in the beginning and, and there is a difference in price. Immediately there is a red flag. So we let the client know they get, they're getting overcharged or otherwise. Um, that's it. Cool. Next question that I've got, and folks, I've only got two more questions. So if you've got them, feel free to jump them into the Q&A. Um, but Jimmy, the next question that I've got for you is what's been the toughest part of this process so far, the journey that, that Energy Master has gone on? Um, what's been the, the toughest part of your journey? All right. Uh, in the beginning was working with banks. Uh, when you represent a startup and, and going into a bank, which is a major corporations with a lot of hierarchy, so start talking with them and trying to get them understand what you're saying, it's complicated. And, mm -hmm. if, and even though they have to share information, which is private and they're quite jealous, uh, that was the toughest uh, uh, thing for us in the beginning and now we're working with two of the major banks in Colombia and now they understand the, the power of analytics now they know about how much money they can save and, and, and at the same time helping the planet that was the toughest uh, thing for us in the beginning cool Jimmy, a couple more questions are coming in now. Uh, first one's in English, the other one's in Spanish. So I'll switch to you for the second one. But uh, for the first one, which is uh, in English, this one's from, uh, let's see, DBRYC. So I'm not entirely sure who that is. But the question is, what have you learned with doing the trial with our customers in multi-site in Australia? What has been the biggest change from Colombia to Australia? Uh, D-U-N-C, so maybe a Duncan? by any chance? Anyway, what have you learned with doing the trial with customers here in Australia? All right, um, in Australia, um, it is complicated in the beginning, get to information from the clients. I know it's difficult because we have to, we need information to be more accurate. So sharing that information was difficult, but now we are running a couple of pilots and we're finding similar results. Uh, even though, like I said before, in Australia, you have a lot of high-tech devices and small meters, even though we have roof, room for improvement. So, so that was kind of the most difficult part of our business, but uh, we don't charge for a pilot. That's pretty much for free. And we tell our clients if they have a, sem a saving potential or not. And like I said in the presentation, if we don't find the savings, we'll give the money back. 
that's how much that how much confidence we are we have in in our product yeah money back guarantee is a pretty strong way of proving value um, yeah Jimmy, it's a win-win situation brian it, that's the main thing for our business yeah cool jimmy can you see the q a section the next question i want to pull is in spanish uh, yes. If you can, what I'm hoping you can do is give a quick translation for the non-Spanish speakers in the audience, and then you can uh, jump into the answer. Okay. ¿Cuáles son los factores más comunes que se presentan en las empresas cuando hay problemas en los servicios de luz? Es decir, ¿qué es lo que más predomina para la empresa se dé se de cuenta de que podría tener un ahorro significativo? Saludos desde Aguascalientes, México. Okay. Greetings. To Mexico, thank you. Um, the question is, uh, what are the main uh, situations with energy consumption? Uh, which is the most, uh, pro, uh, which, how do you can find a significant savings in the, in the energy usage? Uh, okay. So uh, I'm going to start with the answer in Spanish and then I will translate it in English, all right? Yeah, perfect. So, uh, para mi querido amigo mexicano, eh, podemos encontrar muchísimas anomalías, no solo en las facturas, sino en errores, en tarifas, eh, fraudes. Eh, en nuestros países, en Latinoamérica, es muy común que en las noches una persona que esté vendiendo comidas en la calle conecte un cable y, y te saque la energía de un local. Entonces, con nuestros análisis de analítica, Nosotros nos damos cuenta picos de energía en ciertas horas eh, tarifarias. Entonces, imagínate una, una compañía que trabaja de 8 de la mañana a 6 de la tarde y a las 9 de la noche con un consumo de energía grandísimo. Entonces, ahí es donde nosotros nos damos cuenta de todo este tipo de, de problemas que tienen las empresas. Eh, pasa con agua, eh, pasa con electricidad. Entonces, ahí es donde realmente logramos eh, encontrar unos, unos ahorros potenciales muy grandes. Adicional, nosotros estamos yendo en bloque a negociar energía a favor de todos nuestros clientes. Entonces, cuando vamos a donde un proveedor de energía y le decimos, mire, nosotros tenemos tantas empresas que están dispuestas a comprarle la energía a usted, entonces ahí logramos un precio por kilovatio muchísimo mejor al que él tenía. Entonces, son ahorros que vamos logrando en favor de los clientes. So uh, I said, um, we, we can go in block to the energy provider and say, hey, I got a lot of multi-size corporations that are willing to buy energy from you. Uh, if you can give me a better rate, uh, I can switch them to, 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 to you. So, so it's a win-win. Uh, we're, we're, we're saving money doing that negotiations and, and as well, we can prevent frauds. Um, it is typical for, for the Latin American countries that during the night, a person who's selling hot dogs on the street is, co is, is, is connecting a plug in, in a wire inside and a, a post, an electricity post or whatever, and they're stealing the, the energy from another person or another company. So with our analytics, we can, we can see if in the in the schedules or in the and the, and the daily daily hours if, if during the night that, that specific branch is consuming a lot of energy so we can prevent those kind of things cool really good guys i've only got a couple of other questions so if you have any other questions now's the time drop them in the q a uh jimmy my last question for you that we talked about is Remind everybody what you're asked. What are you looking for for this audience from? Um, what, what really can most help Energy Master right now? All right. Um, what we need now is partners, is a company or persons who can believe in our product and help us go globally. Uh, we have a lot of prospects in Latin America and even one in, in Spain, a large, a large bank from, from Spain who has a 9,000 branches worldwide. But what we need is an ecosystem and a, and a partner distribution model. That's what we need. Uh, so we need expertise. We need a lot of help uh, for, for building that model to go globally. That's what we need, Brian. Cool. Really good, Jimmy. Um, folks, if you have any other questions, drop them into the Q&A or let us know in the chat. And I just saw one come across right now. Uh, this is from Douglas Ferreira. 
great presentation, Energy Master. Do you have any plans to incorporate the company in Australia or any other countries in Latin America? Yes, uh, we're looking to open a branch in Mexico and in Peru. Mexico um, has only one energy provider, which gives us a huge advantage because we know for sure they're going to have a lot of mistakes and a lot of, of things going on with working with only working with one energy provider. So, and, and in other countries, we're looking to have a distribution channel for partners. We, 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 we have to build that uh, model so we can sell to companies through those partners. Cool. So what's, uh, while well, I'm waiting for some other questions to come in, Jimmy, I mean, what's next for Energy Master? Where do you go from here? Well, uh, this project and this program was amazing. You know, I learned a lot, a lot of connections. I must congratulate, congratulate you guys because you did an ex outstanding job. I feel great have expen having spent all the time there in Melbourne. It was, it was amazing. So with that uh, and with all that knowledge and all those connections, uh, I think we can scale our business and we know for sure we're gonna gain ground every day to start uh, working in the market and in other countries. Cool. Jimmy, I had another one come in. Uh, this one from Kimberly Winter. What conversations are you hoping to start today? Investors, other pilots, demos, specific companies? All of them. We're working in, in a lot of pilots now with Energy Australia, with um, energy brokers, with final users. Uh, we just want to have all the information we need to say, hey, uh, we have room for improvement and, and so far it's looking good. So investors, yeah, sure. That would be fantastic. We, if we have investors, we can, we can go globally faster than we, we do it on our own. So that's what we want right now, Kim. Perfect. Jimmy, another question just came in. How many sites are you managing right now and what are your expectations for the near future? All right, we're, we're managing around 8,000 sites in Colombia uh, and we're saving a lot of energy, a lot of water and we just got um, a renewal for a, for, a, for a bank for another year mm -hmm. because they saw the opportunity. They're saving money, even though in this situation when where this financial crisis is, is hitting us bad. So even that, uh, they decided to, to give us an, another year for that contract. So we're pretty excited. Cool. Um, Jimmy, other than some of the big, um, uh, you know, obviously there's been some of the pilots that you guys have done here in Australia. What are some of the things that you're most proud of for Energy Master in where it's grown to today? Well, um, like I said in the presentation, uh, being awarded with, with $50,000 for our business idea with no shares, with no uh, equity, nothing. It's just, uh, we believe in your project. We believe in, in what you're doing. And we believe in, in with your services, we can save the planet altogether. So that was a, a significant milestone for us, receiving that award. And, and awesome. it's not about the money, all right? Yes, of course, we can save money to companies, but at the same time, we're helping the planet. That's great for us. So that's why we're so happy about talking to our, to our business idea, to everybody. Cool. Just got another question that just came in. Um, what type of investors are you aiming for? Pre-seed, seed, series A, and what the investment would be used for? Well, uh, we're going to use all the investment as, as a working capital. Uh, we wanna open branches in another countries and we have been working on the, on the cost structure and that's our priority now. We wanna expand our business because we know for sure that we have, uh, we have potential clients in, pre, in, in every country and, and that's where we're gonna use the money. So, Jimmy, elephant in the room for my next question. And again, folks, just keep dropping stuff in the q and I just saw another one pop up. I'll get to it in a second. But, you know, Jimmy, elephant in the room is, of course, uh, we're all being affected by 
COVID-19 in different ways. It's obviously why you had to fly back to Columbia, um, why we're doing this virtually. How is Energy Master being affected by COVID-19? Are you seeing differences in your business? Are you seeing new engagements come out of it? Um, what's really happening for you guys with all of this? All right. Um, of course, it's affecting us. It's affecting pretty much the whole economy and the country and the world. Uh, but we're working mostly with banks, supermarkets, and and um, drugstores. Those three kinds of companies are allowed to work. So with those clients, we can stay afloat. There is no problem with our cost structure, with our um, with with the money we need to run the business on a monthly basis. So. And another kind of companies which, for example, are clothing stores with zero uh, sales right now. Yeah, they're having problems paying the utilities and, and even our services. So we're talking to them. We understand what we're going through and, and we're partners. So, so even in these situations, we're going to be with them. We're going to send them all the information, the reports, so, we can, so they can uh, stay calm during this crisis. Cool. And folks, I'll go back to the Q&A section, but if you have any questions, drop them in. We've got about 15 more minutes for discussion and questions, um, so feel free to drop them into the Q&A. Um, the next question is coming from Jess Vidalis. Um, I didn't get completely the whole participation in Australia from Energy Master and what else is coming related to the Aussie market. So, Jimmy, do you mind going back through the progress that you've made in Australia and what you're hoping comes next for you in the Aussie market? Yes. Um, when we started the program, uh, speaking with the innovation team inside Energy Australia, um, we decided right there that we have to have another business model. Here mm -hmm. in this market and in other markets, we are working with final users. And and talking to those people, we understood that we needed another business model for working with an energy provider like Energy Australia. So we're running a couple of pilots. Uh, we want them. We, we want to make completely sure the the value that we can provide using the software, so so the energy provider can reduce churn. They they wanna they wanna sell as much energy as they want, of course, but they want. But I think. Uh, what they want to do is they want to sell the right energy, not as much energy, but the right energy the clients mm -hmm. need. And using our software, it, it could be a perfect tool for that. So, so that's what we're working with Energy Australia and with final users as well. We're running the, the, the pilots and we're about to deliver all the results. And where do you see the future of Energy Master in Australia, in the Aussie market? Well, it's looking good, Brian. Uh, we're, we're, we're waiting for all the results to, and, and we want to talk with the users and, 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 and try to explain how much money they can save and, and, and the value that we can provide mm -hmm. to them. Awesome. So next question that I've got in here, as multi-site companies start creating their own data lakes and start analyzing their own data and utility bills, how will Energy Master stay relevant? Uh, this question coming from Chris. So as multi-site companies start creating their own data lake and start analyzing their own data and utility bills, how will Energy Master stay relevant? Good question, Chris. All right. Well, um, if a company is using a software or, or whatever program, they're analyzing that information within the company. We provide value because we compare among sites or corporations or markets or even countries. It's like the analogy I use for uh, using Waze or Google Maps. Waze analyzes the information with multiple variables and helps a user getting from one point to another. Why? They're using the information for a lot of users. So that's why Waze can predict the time you, you, you're gonna need for going to one point to another. That's what we do with utilities. We establish a baseline. A baseline is it's, it's, it's a line where I can tell a client how much they should pay, now much how they're getting charged. So if a company is using software like that, okay, that's 
that's good, but it's not going to be as accurate as using our software because of the, the baseline is structure. Cool. Folks, if you've got any other questions, drop them in the Q&A. Like I said, we've got about 13 minutes left um, before we'll wrap this session up. Um, Jimmy, I guess the only other question that I've had is, you know, from, it's a little bit different from what we were talking about earlier, um, but from your experience in the Aussie market um, and working with Australia, has it influenced you in any way in what you're doing in Colombia? Has it changed the business model at all? Like what, what have you, more so than just uh, what have you necessarily learned, but you know, have you realized that there were opportunities that you saw in the Aussie market that are now opportunities in Colombia? Have you, were, was it more that you were just learning from Colombia to bring it to the Australian market? I'm always interested in the intermarket dynamics of companies who go internationally. Yeah. Um, you guys work with a lot of high tech devices, like I said before, and mm -hmm. we are just starting with that process here. So as much information as we have, we're going we're gonna to be more accurate. So we're going to prepare ourselves for that. And we are upgrading our software and our capabilities to work with IoT devices. So working in Australia is going gonna, is gonna to teach us a lot for, 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 for getting into another level in, in another countries. So those learning are pretty much uh, are, are valuable for us. Cool. Folks, again, any other questions, let me know. Um, Jimmy, is there anything, sounds like we might be wrapping up with the questions. We uh, went pretty good. We went for about 50 minutes here. Um, yeah. Oh, I just got one more. I was going to ask you one final question, but I'll drop with this one. Um, as different countries have different pricing structures, um, how is your, sorry, as different countries have different pricing structures, how will your platform, I think what they're trying to say is how can your platform be used um, across those different pricing structures or amongst those different countries? Yeah, uh, that's, that's one of our key differentiators for our competition. Uh, we set up a system according to the client's needs. We're, we're, we're just not selling a product itself. We're, 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 we're analyzing all the information and we are providing um, indicators and, and for example, tariffs structure. We can set up everything according to a market or in a specific client. So we can provide per personalized uh, information to them. So that's key in our business. Awesome. Um, looks like we're coming to the end of our time. We're not getting any more new questions. So Jimmy, here's my question. We've still got about 20 people on the line. What do you want them to know about Energy Master? Where should they follow you? How should they stay in touch if they're interested? And what do you want people to walk away from this whole experience for Energy Master? All right. Um, well, uh, we can be in touch using this platform or our, our web page or my email address. Uh, we're delighted to talk to prospects or, or potential clients or investors or, or even people who wants to understand what we're doing because it's really, it's really excited. Uh, and, and like I said in my presentation, I own a company uh, which I created 10 years ago and we, and we started working on this project. I was delighted because, because it is a cool business idea and we're, we're saving money, we're helping companies understand the utilities, we're helping the planet, so it's a great package. So that's why I'm here and that's why I decided to go to the program and, and I, I, I can see great things are, are coming in, in our path. Well, Jimmy, I just want to speak for SBC and all of our partners and say it was a pleasure having you in the program. I've worked with a lot of different founders and you're definitely something special. Um, I thought we were going to wrap up, but I just got one more question in on the wire. Oh, thank you so much. No, thank you guys. Hey, you've been a great audience. We really appreciate it. Um, make sure you follow Energy Master on all their social media and their websites. You can get all of that information on the EA um, 20 Demo Day website, the microsite that was just in there. Um, and Energy Master, congratulations. Well done. You really made it through and thanks so much. Thanks everybody for joining. We really appreciate it. At this point, I'm going to turn the recording off and we will say our goodbyes. Thank you all so much for joining. Bye. Thank you, Brian. Bye-bye.